So I got this um, car radiator fan electric motor for free. This is a DC 12 volt motor. Um, so I pulled it apart, I smashed it a little bit trying to get it apart. And then inside there were 18 different coils that were wound around all these pieces. So I got all the different uh, pieces of copper. So I got about 130 feet of 12 ga 20 gauge copper wire out of this motor. And then I had another motor where I got these um, larger spools. And I put them together now with 28 feet. And I have nine coils with 28 feet. So I put four of these smaller coils together. And then I wind 28 feet of copper wire like this. And this is going to make my three phase um, alternator that I'm going to use for my wind turbine. So this is free copper wire. And if you look at it, it looks like it's brand new. And this copper wire is relatively expensive. So you can just find motors and you can take the copper wire out of it and you can put whatever shape coil you want. The magnets are a little more difficult. This had four magnets, um, but the magnets, they shatter, they're harder to cut. Copper wire is very easy to unwind and then wind again. And this is what I used to wind it. So this is the, the template for the center. It winds around there. And then have this plate, this plate goes in front. So I just wind it in a circle there. It's quite easy, so I'm going to make nine of those coils, and then I'm going to put it into my alternator here, where I have two discs with 12 magnets each, and I should be able to get quite a bit of electricity. So this would be electricity that I'm getting from the wind for free. Um, it's very easy to make these wooden blades, and then if I can make my own generator for free, and the generator you can change to whatever you need, whatever size um, prop or whatever your wind speeds are, you can change the magnets and you can change the coils so that you get the right voltage to ch charge your batteries. So I finished my nine free coils. All these coils were made from a wire I got from motors that were in the garbage. So this is 100% free. All the copper wire here is free. So there's about 60 turns per coil and it's totaling about 250 feet of wire that was used to make these coils. So this should make a pretty strong stator um, that I can use to create free electricity from wind. 2.4. I have to make sure I don't get my hand caught in there. Okay, 2.4, that's really good. Okay, I'm going to show how I wind my coils um, for my generator. I'm building this uh, wind generator. So I need the same uh, length of wire for every coil. So I use 28 feet for this uh, design, eight, um, 20 gauge uh, wire. So this coil is the wrong shape and there's a lot of air in between. I only wind these coils to store it so it's not, it doesn't tangle when I get it out of the motor that I get for free. Um, so I want something like this. I want a very compact coil. I want it to be the exact same thickness. This is a quarter of an inch thick um, so that the magnets can pass by very close and it goes past a lot of different um, windings. I think this has about um, 70 uh, turns in the wire. So what I did is I built this. So first I cut a quarter of an inch plywood um, piece for the center for it to wind around. So that makes this space here. And I measured this based on the size of my magnet and um, the coils touching on each side. And then I just have a back plate here with the same holes drilled in it. And I put these two pieces of threaded rod. So I tighten these nuts to hold everything together. And then my front plate is basically the same size as a coil when it's finished. So it overlaps a little bit, but you can see that the edges, the corners here, hold it in place. It's okay if it comes over a little bit, it just can't come over the uh, corners. I put the front plate on, you can see the gap there, we're going to wind in there. And I tighten these nuts so that it's very tight so it doesn't move when I'm wrapping. First of all, I unwound a section of the wire, so that's the rest of the spool, and I take this end piece and then I feed it through the start hole and I go so it comes out the back and you want enough length so you can connect to the other coils if you're doing a three phase you're gonna have to skip every three coils so I just fold it over so it stays there and now I can start winding usually I hold it but I have to hold the camera so it's uh, I need both hands so you want to put a lot of tension you really want to pull 
as you wind in a circle. And you want to do this until you have a reasonable amount of wire left for the end piece. So when you're done winding, I like leaving about a foot at the end just for three phase, uh, connect a long way around the circle to the next, um, the next coil. And it's a lot easier to cut off a little bit of wire than to solder in an extra section of wire. So I think it's always best to keep um, extra wire at the end. Um, and you can see here that it's kind of spilling over the sides. That's fine, as long as it doesn't come up and over the corner. And if you wind it and you get on top of the wood here, you're gonna have to go back and rewind. You want everything nice and inside the groove all the way around. Also, you have to keep tension on it at all times when you're winding. Um, I find clothespins help um, if I need both hands so I don't have to continue pulling on it. But if you want to readjust the, the spool that you're taking from and you want to straighten that wire, you can't just let go. If you let go, the wire is going to naturally um, uncoil itself. Um, and now the next stage is uh, the most difficult part. You have to take this plate off and remove the coil from the support. And at this stage, it's naturally going to want to um, just explode and come apart. So you have to hold both wires and the coil together and you have to tape it. So I like using duct tape, it works quite well. Um, you can use, I use four strips just on each straight section, the four corners. So I have four pieces that I can easily take with one hand and wrap it quickly. If you need to get both hands, then this thing is gonna explode. And if it does turn into a big mess, you're gonna have to rewind it. Um, a lot of people use uh, super glue or something like that um, to glue the the coils together. Um, I'm doing an experimental um, test here, so I might want to rewind this into a different shape or use it for a different generator. So I'm going to leave this so I can easily take off the tape and rewind these coils afterwards. But if you use super glue, you can just put a couple drops on the coil and let it dry. And when you take it off, it's a nice solid uh, mass, which makes it a lot easier. And you see, I just hold it with one finger and the two wires are still held and already it's trying to uncoil. So I have to push that down it's the start and the end that come apart the easiest. So I have to keep it in tension, just try and hold the shape together um, while I'm applying the tape. I wish I could film this, but I really do need both hands.